Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to see what is culture and personality. So what is culture? Initially, there was a British scholar named Edward Taylor quoted culture or civilization taken in its wider ethnographic sense is that complex whole which includes knowledge, belief, art, moral, law, customs and any other capabilities and habits acquired by a man as a member of society. This was stated in the year 1871. In precise, we can say culture refers to the symbols, language, belief, value and artifacts that are part of any society. Features of culture First, organic and supra-organic. Culture is organic when we consider the fact that there is no culture without human society. When it is supra-organic, it is because it goes far beyond any individual lifetime. Precisely, individuals come and go, but culture remains same and persistent. Second, implicit and explicit. It is explicit when we consider those actions which can be explained and described easily by those who perform them. And it is implicit when we consider those things we do, but are unable to explain them, yet we believe them to be so. Third, culture is changing and stable. Culture is stable when we consider what people hold valuable and are handing over to the next generation in order to maintain their norms and values. However, when culture comes into contact with other cultures, it can change. Culture changes not only because of direct or indirect contact between culture, but also through innovation and adaptation to new circumstances. Culture is overt and covert. So, we can generally divide into material and non-materialistic culture. So material culture consists of any tangible human made objects or man-made objects such as automobiles, building, tools, etc. So when it is non-materialistic culture, which consists of non-physical aspects like language, belief, ideas, knowledge, attitude and values. Fifth, culture is learned and shared. So, culture is the public property of a social group of people, meaning it is shared. Individuals get cultural knowledge of the group through socialization. We should note that all things among people might not be cultural, as there are many biological attributes which people share among themselves. Sixth, culture is symbolic. So, it is based on the purposeful creation and usage of symbols. It is exclusive to humans. Symbolic thought is unique and crucial to humans and to culture. How? Symbolic thought is the human ability to give a thing or event an arbitrary meaning and grasp and appreciate that meaning. Symbols are the central component of culture. So we can say symbols refers to anything to which people attach meaning and which they use to communicate with others. Example like gestures, sounds, objects, words, or image that represent something else rather than themselves. So we can say there is no obvious natural or necessary connection between a symbol and what it symbolizes. Finally, culture is ideal and it manifests. So ideal culture involves the way people ought to behave or what they ought to do. Manifest culture involves what people actually do. Characteristics of culture. Culture has five basic characteristics. It is learned, shared, based on symbols, integrated and dynamic. All cultures share these five basic features. Let's get to know one by one. First, culture is learned. It is not biological, we do not inherit it, precisely genetics. Much of learning culture takes place unconsciously. We learn culture from family, friends, institutions, media, 
etc. So the process of learning culture is known as enculturation or in other terms we can say it is socialization. While all humans have biological needs like food and sleep, we fulfill those needs in a different way. It varies cross-culturally. Second, culture is shared. Because we share culture with one person or with other members of our group, we are able to act in socially appropriate way as well as predict how people will act. Despite the shared nature of culture, which doesn't mean that culture is homogeneous. Third, culture is based on symbols. A symbol is something that stands for something else or someone else. Symbols vary cross-culturally and are arbitrary. They only have meaning when people in a culture agree on the use. Like language, money, art, these are symbols. We can also say language is the most important symbolic component of culture. Fourth, culture is integrated. This is known as holism or the various parts of culture being interconnected. So all aspects of culture are related to one another and to truly understand a culture, one must learn about all of its parts, not only few. Finally, culture is dynamic. Culture is dynamic. In precise, we can say culture interact and change because most culture are in contact with other culture. They exchange ideas and symbols and all culture change otherwise they would have problems adapting to changing environment. We can say adapting to environmental situation and because culture are integrated with one component in the system changes, it is likely that the entire system must adjust. Elements of culture. The first element is symbols. Symbols are the central component of culture. Symbols refers to anything to which people attach meaning and which they use to communicate with others. More specifically, symbols are words, objects, gestures, sounds or image that represent something else rather than themselves. Symbolic thought is unique and crucial to human and to culture. It is the human ability to give a thing or event an arbitrary meaning and grasp and appreciate that meaning. Um, there is no obvious natural or necessary connection between a symbol and what it symbolizes. Second is value. Values are essential elements of non-materialistic culture. They may be defined as general abstract guidelines for our life, goals, decisions, choices and actions. They are shared ideas of a group or a society as to what is right or wrong, correct or incorrect, desirable or undesirable, um, acceptable or unacceptable, ethical, unethical, etc. regarding something. So they are generally like a roadmap for our life. So values are shared and are learned in group. Um, they can be positive or negative. For example, we can say honesty, truth. So telling, respect for others, hospitability, helping those in need, etc. are positive values. For examples of negative values indicate theft, disrespect, dishonesty, uh, falsehood, etc. So values are dynamic, meaning they change over time. Uh, they are also static, which is they tend to persist without any significant modification. So values are diverse fight, meaning they vary from place to place and culture to culture. Some values may be universal because there is a biopsychological unity among people everywhere and all time. In other words, they emanate from basic similarity of mankind's origin, nature and desire. Third is norm. Norms are also essential element of culture. They are implicit principles for social life, uh, relationships and interaction. So norms are detailed and specific rules for specific situations. In precise, we can say they tell us how to do something or what to do, what not to do and when to do it, why to do it, etc. So norms are derived from values. 
which means for every specific norm there is a general value that determine uh, its content so individuals may not act according to the defined values and norms of the group therefore violation of values and norms and deviating from the standard values and norms are often common so social norm may be divided into two uh, mores and folkway so mores are important and stronger social norm for existence um, safety, uh, well-being and continuity of the society or the group of society. So uh, what do we do? So violation and deviation from these kinds of norms uh, at times result in serious reaction from the groups. So the strongest norm are regarded as the formal laws of a society or a group. So formal laws are basically written and codified social norms. So the other kind of mores are called conventions. So conventions are established rules governing behavior. So they are generally accepted ideals by the society. So conventions may be regarded as written and signed agreement between nation to govern the behavior of individuals, group and nation. So folkway. So folkway are the way of life developed by a group of people. So they can, we can say that they are detailed and minor instruction traditions or rule for day to day life that may help us to function effectively and efficiently or smoothly as a member as a group so here we can say violating such kinds of norms may not result in a serious punishment unlike violating mores so they are less morally binding so in other words folk ways are appropriate ways of behaving and doing things example we can say etiquette uh, dressing rules like how we talk how we walk finally it's language so, language specifically defined as a system of verbal and in many cases written symbols with rules about how those symbols can be strung together to convey more complex meanings. So it is like a distinct capacity and positions of humans. So we can say it is a key element of culture. So culture encompasses language and through language culture is communicated and transmitted. So without language, it would be impossible to develop, elaborate and transmit culture to the future generation or upcoming generation. Dimensions of culture. First one is cognitive. This refers to how we learn to process what we hear or say. Second one is normative. This refers to rules of conduct. Finally, material. This includes any activity made possible by means of materials which may include tools and machines. Let's get to know what is personality. According to Robert Park and Ernest Berges, personality is a sum and organization of those traits which determine the role of the individual in the group. In precise, we can say the term personality is derived from the Latin word persona, meaning a mask. Personality is a pattern body of habits, traits, attitudes and ideas of an individual as they are organized externally and internally. Externally is roles and statuses. Internally is motivation, goals and anything which is related to selfhood. The two main approaches to the study of personality. The first one is psychological and second one is sociological. So psychological. Psychological approach consider personality as a certain style peculiar to the individual. So this style is determined by the characteristic organization of mental trends, uh, complex emotions and sentiments. Whereas the sociological approach considers personality in terms of the status of the individual in the group. So in the terms of his or her conception of the role in the group of which he or she is a member. So we can sum up by saying personality is acquired by the individual as a result of his participation in group life. So as a member of the group, he or she learns certain behavior system and symbolic skills, so which determine uh, his ideas, attitudes and social values. So these ideas, attitudes and values which an individual holds comprises this personality. So we can say in other terms or brief it, Personality is not related to bodily structure alone. It includes both structure and dynamics. Then, personality is an indivisible unit. Third, 
personality is neither good nor bad as every person is unique in their own ways. Then, personality refers to persistent qualities of the individual. It expresses consistency and regularity. And personality is acquired. And finally, personality is influenced by social interaction. It is defined in terms of behavior and precise socialization. Thanks for watching. Hope you like this video. Uh, put down your suggestions in the comment box below.